Hi everyone, this is Leah, your lead course instructor here at ACT. And we are going to continue on with our anatomy and physiology lesson. Um, and today we're gonna talk about the endocrine system. So here's an overview of the endocrine system. Um, the endocrine system is a network of glands and organs located throughout the body. They all play a vital role in controlling and regulating um, many of our body's functions by way of chemical messengers called hormones. So these hormones are secreted by these different glands um, within the endocrine system, and they travel throughout the bloodstream to various organs and tissues in the body. And these hormones then um, instruct or tell these organs and tissues what to do or how to function. So functions here of the endocrine system, one is water equi uh, equilibrium. So the endocrine system controls um, water equilibrium by regulating um, the solute concentration of the blood. Um, also, the endocrine system is responsible for the growth, metabolism, and tissue maturation. So um, it helps to control many of the, uh, the tissues like the bone and, mus and muscle and the degree of metabolism of various tissues, which helps um, in the maintenance um, of the normal, of a normal body temperature and normal mental functions. Um, we also have uh, heart rate and blood pressure management. So the endocrine system is um, very important here in assisting and managing um, heart rate and blood pressure and helps in preparing the body for physical motion. Uh, the endocrine system also is um, helpful and responsible for um, the immune system control. So by helping to regulate the production and functions um, of immune cells and then also reproductive function controls it. We just um, went over the reproductive system. Um, and so we talked a little bit about that uh, in that last lesson, but the endocrine system helps to regulate the development and the function of um, the reproductive systems in both males and females. So continuing on with functions of the endocrine system, there are a lot. The endocrine system is very important and vital as you can see here. So uterine contractions and milk release, um, uh, the, the endocrine system helps um, throughout the delivery of a newborn and stimulates milk release. Um, in females that are breastfeeding. Um, ion management, so also helps to regulate sodium, potassium concentrations in the blood. And then um, it also helps with blue, uh, blood glucose. So, and the endocrine system controls blood glucose levels and other nutrient levels in the body. And then there's um, also responsible for direct gene activation as well as second messenger, as a second messenger system, as you can see here. So organs of the endocrine system, um, as I said, there are glands um, of the endocrine system where these hormones are produced, stored, and released. And each gland produces um, one or more hormones, which go on to target specific organs and tissues, as we talked about. Um, some of these glands and organs include the pituitary, the thyroid, the parathyroid, the adrenal, the penile, the thymus, the pancreas, and the gonads. It's also important to note that the hypothalamus of the brain um, though part of the nervous system is also considered as a major endocrine organ because it produces several hormones. So um, it is an important on an autonomic nervous system and endocrine, endocrine control center of the brain. Um, so I just wanted to make a, a note of that here. So first we'll start uh, with the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland is located behind the hypothalamus. It is approximately the size of a pea. 
Um, it has two functional lobes, the anterior pituitary and then the posterior, posterior pituitary. And you can see here is the brain, and then um, the pituitary gland is right here. So the, there are different hormones that both the anterior and then the posterior pituitary gland um, produce. Um, I'm not going to read all of these down here through the anterior pituitary list because you can read them, but as you can see, the anterior, anterior pituitary gland um, produces growth hormone, prolactin, um, thyroid stimulating hormone, um, also the FSH, which we talked about in our reproductive uh, lesson, the follicle stimulating hormone, and then the luteinizing hormone as well. And then, of course, the, hor the hormones of the um, gonads. And then the hormones of the, pitu the posterior pituitary gland, oxytocin, is, of course, um, helps, is released during childbirth and in nursing women. And then um, the antidiuretic hormone helps to uh, cause the kidneys to reabsorb water from forming um, of urine. The thyroid gland, as you can see, is right here. It's in the front part of your neck. It's very important for metabolism. So the thyroid hormone controls the rate of which glucose is burned um, and converted to body heat. So it's also important for normal tissue growth and development. And the thyroid produces thyroxine, or T4, and thyroid, uh, thyroidine, or T3. Here we have the parathyroid. So the parathyroids are actually located within the larger th thyroid gland. So um, this is helpful and important for maintaining control of calcium levels in the bones and the blood. And it helps to secrete the, the parathyroid, secretes the parathyroid hormone, um, which is, mo is an important uh, regulator of calcium of the blood. Here we have the adrenal glands. So one adrenal gland can be found on top of each kidney right here and right here, one on the right and then one on the left. And these glands produce hormones that are important for regulating functions such as blood pressure, heart rate, and your stress response. Here are the hormones of the adrenal glands. So there's the adrenal cortex and the adrenal, adrenal medulla. And the adrenal cortex um, helps to produce the mineral, uh, mineral <laughs> corticoids and renin, and also the um, atrial natriuretic peptide, glucocorticoid corticoids and the sex hormones, and then um, the hormones of the adrenal medulla produced are the catecholamines, and the function of catecholamines help to increase heart rate, blood pressure, and blood glucose levels, um, and help to dilate the small passageways of the lungs. So moving on to the pancreas. So the pancreas is right here in your abdomen behind your stomach, and it helps to control blood sugar levels. Um, the isolates of Langhorns, also called the pancreatic isolates, are masses of hormone-producing tissues scattered throughout um, the pancreas. Two important hormones produced by these cells are insulin and glucogen. Um, Islet cells secrete insulin and glucogen during um, feeding and fasting times. The beta cells um, are high levels of glucose in the blood, stimulate the release of insulin from the beta cells. And then you have the alpha cells, and then glucogen's released by the alpha cells is stimulated by low, low glucose, 
uh, low blood glucose levels. And then you have insulin, and we all know that insulin acts on the body cells and increases their ability to transport glucose across um, the, the plasma membranes. And then we have the glucagon as well. Moving on here to the penile glands. So um, this is also called the penile body, and it's a small cone-shaped gland, as you can see here is the brain, um, and it hangs from the roof of the third ventricle of the brain. And so the penile gland is very important um, because it secretes melatonin, and, um, and that's the only hormone that the penile gland uh, stimulates or produces. And the levels, the levels of melatonin rise and fall during the course of the day and night. So peak levels occur at night and make you drowsy as melatonin is um, widely known and believed to be the sleep trigger. And so it plays a very important role in establishing the body's um, wake and sleep cycle and day and night cycle. Here we have the thymus gland, as you can see, that's right here. So the thymus gland is large in infants and children and decreases in size throughout adulthood. And the thymus gland is um, uh, produces a hormone called thymosin that is essential for the normal development of white blood cells or the T lymphocytes or T cells, which we also discuss in our immune um, lesson. So this obviously helps with the immune response. And then the endocrine system here again, the gonads, which we talked um, a lot about in our last lesson, but the uh, female and male gonads produce sex hormones that are identical to those produced by the adrenal cortex. Um, hormones of the ovaries include estrogen and progesterone, and then hormones of the testes include testosterone. So chemistry of hormones, um, so the key to the power of the endocrine gland is obviously the hormones that they produce and secrete. So um, as we've been discussing, hormones are those chemical substances um, that are secreted by these endocrine glands um, and to help to regulate me metabolic activity of other cells in the body. So um, there's different classifications of these hormones. Um, but nearly all of them can be classified chemically as either um, amino acid-based molecules or steroids. Steroid hormones um, include the sex hormones made by the gonads and hormones produced by the adrenal cortex. And then amino acid-based hormones are other non-steroidal amino acid derivatives. So here, um, this was important for me to share with you is the control of the hormone re release. So what prompts the endocrine glands to release or not release their hormones? Well, there's something called negative feedback mechanisms um, are the main ways of regulating blood levels of nearly all hormones. And the endocrine gland stimuli that activate um, the endocrine organs and it, fall, it falls into three main categories, so hormonal, humoral, and neural. So the hormonal stimuli is the most common, um, and it is the endocrine organs are prodded into action by other hormones. So the hypothalamic hormones stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to secrete its hormones, and many anterior pituitary hormones then stimulate other endocrine organs to release their, their hormones into the blood. Then there's the humoral stimuli, so changing blood levels of certain ions and nutrients may also stimulate hormone release. Um, and this, an example would be the release of parathyroid hormone by cells of the parathyroid gland is then prompted um, by the decreasing blood calcium levels. And then there is the neural stimuli, so an isolated cases, nerve uh, fibers can stimulate hormone release, and the target cells um, 
are said to respond to these neural stimuli. So an example would be uh, the sympathetic nervous system stimulating um, the adrenal medulla to release norepinephrine and epinephrine during periods of stress. So as we can see here, the endocrine system is, um, I think, very actually quite fascinating and interesting, um, but also can be um, a little bit complicated. So if you, again, have questions or you need clarification about anything, you know that you can always outreach me by um, <clears throat> sending me an email or you could also schedule office hours with me. But uh, thanks for listening and we'll be back again soon.